Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Robert Earl White with the Order of Light and I hope you are hungry because we are serving up a big nothing burger today for you. If you watched the UFO hearing that went on in Congress this past week, you were probably like me watching your phone and screaming at it. Some of you probably took your phone and launched it across your living room. Who knows? But one thing is for sure, they are not telling us anything that we already don't know. If anything, they are trying to redirect us into some other narrative that the public just isn't aware of. This past week, Representative of Congress Tim Burchett talked about how this was a flat-out cover-up and he exposed a lot of different stuff about this hearing. No, are aliens real? Are they real? Did we learn anything new yesterday? Did you learn anything new? Is it classified, but you'll tell us, but you won't tell anybody else? Well, no, I, I wasn't allowed to be in the classified meeting, and I was actually uh, not allowed to ask a question. I was told I was going to get to ask questions, and then they sent me a text that said, no, in fact, the chairman would not allow you to ask a question. Uh, I believe it was a cover-up. Yeah. So what I'm going to try to do is go over the highlights of this Congress hearing and provide additional information and evidence to show you that they are playing the public. Our tax dollars are clearly being used against us. So hang on, and as I said, I hope you're hungry for some nothing burgers because that's what we're serving up to you today. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, let's get it going. Privilege to be here with you today to address your questions regarding unidentified aerial phenomenon or UAP. What are UAP? Put simply. Simply put, UAP is a term created to discredit many people that have encountered UFOs. They will keep switching the words up so there won't be any accountability. They will do the same thing for extraterrestrials. When they do tell the public about it, it's going to be called NHI, non-human intelligence. Another word play to misdirect the public. Here is Representative Tim Burchett saying the exact same thing. Don't take it from me. That's what they're doing. They're playing the narrative and confusing the public. By the way, when did it become UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena? We gotta be, we, we don't wanna offend the aliens. We can't, they're unidentified flying objects. I, what, we changed that? Well, uh, that, that's just, uh, I think that's another attempt to confuse the public. To it's see, UFOs, yeah, there's yeah. nothing. The other thing, you Congressman, know, I, I have, we only have, have about a, a minute left. I have a t-shirt on ahead. our website that we're selling that says uh, more people believe in, in UFOs than believe in Congress. And it's the <laughs> truth, man. I mean, it, this is why nobody right. trusts us. This garbage that we I continue just... to put out, it just, it's beyond me. Um, it, the cover up upon cover up. With regard to the importance of transparency, the department is fully committed to the principle of openness and accountability to the American people except for when it's in the false name of national security. The same reason my family suffered after we saw a UFO crash. The men in black in the Air Force threatened my 22-year-old single mother that they would take me, her son, away from her. She didn't report it as a UFO. As long as there is a false sense of national security, this will be the angle they play. So I put together this awesome video of all the times they said national security out of this one hour and six minute nothing burger that they called a hearing. A roll that wonderful footage. As a national security threat to be monitored and investigated. Just to protect national security. Known threats to our nation, national security with nation does not risk national security. It should be stood as a national security matter and trust with our national security to investigate. Those potential flight safety and general security risks. Expose potential threats to the security of our operations. As it may compromise the security of our operations, represent a potential threat to our security. This can be uh, a national security challenge. Comprehensively as possible as a national security threat. So that our national security is... Any national security implications or ramifications. Is a foreign intelligence or national security threat that uh, with our national security needs. Now this is where things get really interesting. 
when they call out the UAP task force on only presenting their low-hanging fruit, only showing the public things that they can explain while ignoring everything that they can't. They do this on purpose so the public will lose interest and keep these things for them so they can weaponize it and use it for their own narratives against us, the tax-paying people. This is what's going on. This is the third version of this task force, and to be frank, um, one of Congress's concerns is that the executive branch and administration, both parties, uh, has been sweeping concerns about UAPs under the rug by focusing on events that can be explained and avoiding events that cannot be explained. What can you, what, 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 what can you say to give the American people confidence that you aren't just focusing our attention on low-hanging fruit with easy explanations. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. They are going to show us some of the best evidence they have. They are not going after the low-hanging fruit. They are going to show you the best of what they got for this historic hearing on UFOs. Are you ready? <laughs> Let me share with you the first video that we have here today, which shows an observation in real time. There it was. Holy crap! Did you see that nothing burger? Whoa, just wait. It gets better. That's, in many cases, that's all that a report may include. Now, come on, that's a flat-out lie. What about the military cameras backed by multiple radar signatures? There is so much compelling evidence that they are purposely not showing the public. And hey, here's a thought and idea. If you took the thousands of videos coming from civilians, which in most cases, they're on the ground, stationary videos where these things are even clearer, why not use those? Well, I forgot, they don't want too much evidence. They don't want to actually prove anything to anyone. That's their game. This often limited amount of high quality data uh, and reporting hampers our ability to draw firm conclusions about the nature or intent of UAP. Now here's a clip of Tim Burchette, the representative of Tennessee of Congress, talking about this is what they really should have been showing the public. You know, you. That's the video they should have been showing, the right. video from the, um, from the Navy pilot. We had a Navy pilot there, actually, and he was not allowed to testify. But the Navy footage and the voice uh, from the Navy, um, from, from, their, from, the, uh, wing, uh, from their wing camera, but no, they instead showed some picture of uh, a video, about a 30-second video, and they tried to freeze the frame on, of Adam Schiff. Even Adam Schiff said, what am I looking at here? What is this? Yeah. And and the guy in the Naval Intelligence Officer went up and said, well, if we can freeze this frame, the best technology in the world, and dadgum, they couldn't freeze one frame in a 30-second video. It was a total joke. That's why people that, that question about UFOs uh, continue to question because Washington, D.C. continues in this cover-up. Mr. Bray, can you rerun that first uh, image that looked like it was outside of a plane window? Um, and if you wouldn't mind going up to the screen and tell us what we're, what we're seeing. I, not that you can necessarily tell us what we're seeing, but right. explain what we should be looking at in that first image. Absolutely. Uh, and Alexi, what I'll ask is if you can stop it at a certain point. So this is the point where it gets really funny. It takes some um, six plus minutes to stop it on this frame of this UFO. Keep in mind they've had months of planning. They could have took a screenshot and showed that as well along with the actual clip. The best tax dollars can buy and they couldn't even get the screenshot of the craft. looking outside of a uh, civilian aircraft window? Is that what we're To present at? to the public. At this point people okay. probably just stopped watching the whole entire thing. So, in the meantime, let me show you four UFO videos I've captured 
why we wait for them to show you this one. All right, as we wait patiently, let's take a look at this. Look at that thing flying right through the air. Some sort of craft, circular, shaped like a probe, a sphere, cruising through the clouds. It was hard to keep visuals on it because of the sun glare. This was in the direction of the sun. And you can see from the glare, I lose it on the small <laughs> screen, unfortunately. Sometimes they're moving so quick, it's really hard to get locked on them, especially when there's clouds. Here's another great one. You can see one tailing that plane right there on the side. And look, here comes another one that's flying down, and it goes right in front of the craft. Is that it right there? Once again, that seems as that would be a concern uh, can you point to the screen again for the many we're pilots to to that have encountered these things. Imagine having one fly right in front of you. And as this one's cruising through the air, we're still waiting for the one that they're showing in Congress, which they can't figure out. By time they get to show this phenomenal UFO, you've already seen four different videos. This video alone is a minute and 30 seconds. So I have no idea what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. This UFO is still flying. They should just use this. It's been visible the entire okay, video. Stop that frame. Plane, not doctor, absolutely real. Look at this, it's incredible. And whoever was operating that computer should be fired. I'm just throwing that out there. That's embarrassing. But they do it on purpose. That's a part of their plan, no doubt about it. It's still going. Keep in mind all of these videos are broad daylight. Super clear. Here's another one. See that object? It looked black flying across the plane and it stops for a brief second watch this it goes it's moving and then it just stops for a second right there it stops and then keeps it going and here's my favorite the tic tac flip look at how clear that is how short this clip is this was probably one of the best ufos i've ever okay. caught no so doubt about see, it and how this thing just flips like that absolutely incredible um, the laptop we're working wow. with uh, is yeah. not as easy for us stopping that video at the right we'll, spot so we'll, let's we'll see what these what jokers are talking seen about in that uh, what are we observing uh, what you see here uh, is um, uh, aircraft that is uh, operating in a uh, uh, in a US Navy uh, training range uh, that has observed a spherical object uh, in that area. Uh, it's something uh, uh, that's going by, uh, uh, video, up and a, uh, um, over. Uh, it looks uh, under, reflective uh, in this video, uh, somewhat uh, reflective, uh, 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 and it uh, quickly uh, passes uh, by uh, 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 the cockpit. Uh, 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 the, uh, shove another one down there, Bob. Is this one of the phenomena that we can't explain? I do not have an explanation for what this, this specific uh, uh, object is. And, and is this one of the situations where it is... That's the, that's the object that we're looking at right there. Thank you. Um, and is this a situation where it was observed by the pilot and it was also recorded by the aircraft's instruments? Uh, we'll talk about the multi-sensor part uh, in a later session. Uh, oh, I don't know how to use this damn thing. But, whoa, whoa, whoa. but in this case, uh, we have at least that. Um, in in the. Director of National Intelligence uh, 2021 unclassified report. Um, the ODNI reported 144 UAPs between 2004 and 2021, uh, 80 percent of which were uh, recorded on multiple instruments. Um, and I take it, with respect to some of those, you had the pilot, a pilot seeing them. If it was observed by a pilot, right. and you had multiple instruments recording it. So you really have three sensors, the human sensor and two uh, technical uh, sensors detecting the object, is that? For the, for the majority of uh, uh, incidents that we had in the uh, last year's report, uh, the majority had multi-sensor data. Uh, when I talk about the 400 reports that we have now, uh, I, that number will certainly go down because a lot of those uh, 
new reports that we have are actually historic reports that are narrative based. So that percentage will go down just as a uh, factor of uh, the fact that the that the destigmatization has resulted in more narrative reports. And, and that's the object we're looking at right there now. Right? That's it right there. Okay. Uh, Congratulations, clowns! Wow. All right. I don't know who this guy is, but this is where things take a dark side for the UFO community. They want to go after researchers and people with hypothesis about this phenomena, and they want to find ways of legally punishing those who share opinions and ideas about this phenomena that don't meet their narrative. This is really, really bad, and like I said, I don't know who this Congress guy is, but I do not like the tone of his voice. As we talk about, um, and I would say there's a lot of what I would call uh, amateur interest groups uh, that are involved in the UAP field. My, my question is, when um, there are unsubstantiated claims or manufactured claims of UAPs or kind of false information that's put out there, uh, what are the consequences for people that are involved with that or groups that are involved with that? So one of the concerns that we have is that uh, there are a lot of uh, individuals and groups that are, are putting information out there that, um, that could be considered to be somewhat self-serving. Uh, we're trying to do what's in, the, what's in the best interest of, one, the Department of Defense, and then, two, what's in the best interest of the public. So. Let me get this right. It's self-seeking for an individual to share this information to the public, but it's not self-seeking for the government to withhold this information, to use it as they see fit, and what they think is best for us, therefore we are not allowed to share it. This is very bad news, especially for people like myself, Dr. Michael Sala, Elena Danan. The choice of knowing about this phenomena falls solely on an individual. Whether someone is able to understand this phenomena or not, that is up to the individual, not up to people in the UAP task force or Congress or the government in general to tell us what is acceptable. It's also been reported uh, that there have been UAP observed uh, and interacting with and flying over sensitive military facilities, particularly not just ranges, but uh, some facilities housing our strategic nuclear forces. Uh, one such incident allegedly occurred uh, uh, at Malmstrom Air Force Base, in which 10 of our nuclear ICBMs were rendered inoperable. At the same time, a glowing red orb was observed overhead. I'm not commenting on the accuracy of this. I'm simply asking you whether you're aware of it and whether you have any comment on the accuracy of that report. Let me pass that to Mr. Bray. If you've been looking at UAP over the last uh, three years. Uh, that data is not uh, within the holdings of the UAP task force. Okay, but are you aware of the, the report or that the data exists somewhere? Uh, I have uh, I have heard stories. I have not seen the official data on that. So you've just seen informal stories, no official assessment that you've done or exists within DOD that you're aware of uh, regarding the Malmstrom incident? Uh, all I can speak to is, you know, what's within my cognizance of the UAP task force, and we have not looked at that incident. Well, I would say, I mean, it's a pretty high-profile incident. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert on this, but that's out there in the ether. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, if, who else is doing it? If something was officially brought to our attention, we would look at it. Uh, there are many things that are out there in the ether that aren't officially brought to our attention. So this is the moment when Congress realized they are not the ones in the need to know. How would it have to be officially brought to your attention? I'm official. bringing it to your attention. Sure, so. This is pretty official. Sure. So we'll go back and take a look at it, but generally there is some um, authoritative figure. That authoritative figure is the military complex, the black budget projects and the men in black that go around silencing everything. That's what's really going on. Tim Burchette says the exact same thing. Uh, the arrogance of our industrial war complex, whatever you want to call it, the Pentagon. 
Not to mention that they are using our tax dollars to pay for these projects that Congress is clearly not in the need to know. As Tim Burchette talks about this $40 billion fund for Ukraine, and a lot of that money is going to some uh, mysterious things. Wonder what it could be. Do you actually think that we sent $40 billion to Ukraine? I mean, if you read into that $40 billion, there are several military items in there that I've talked to military professionals that said, in fact, that's already covered. So there's money that we've got that's going into some sort of dark project. Every time I hear it, I will hear that these could be, you know, this could be uh, Russian military planes that they're developing in secret. And I'm scratching my head, Congressman. Russia's been at war in Ukraine for the last 80 plus days. Don't you think maybe we would have seen these planes if this was something they were developing? The Russians, if they had this, honestly, I've said this before, Putin's got such an incredible ego. I mean, that guy, he would drive, he would fly, land it on the White House lawn, get <laughs> right. out bare chested, <laughs> ride a unicorn over, right. wrestle Joe Biden to the ground, get back on his unicorn, <laughs> get back in his UFO, ride back to Russia. If the Chinese had it, they would control it. Yeah. It's, it's got to be something, either either our dark, our dark operation, or it's got to be something from out of this world. That says there is an incident that occurred. We'd like you to look at this. Uh, but in terms of just tracking what may be in the media that says that something occurred at this time, at this place, uh, there are probably a, a lot of leads that we would have to follow up on. I don't think we have resources to do that right now. Well, I don't claim to be an authoritative figure, but for what it's worth, I would like you to look in, into it. Yeah, that's not going to happen. The less intelligence they have, the more deniability they can take. That's how they operate, and that's why they keep switching the names of these programs and UFO to UAP, alien extraterrestrial to NHI, non-human intelligences. This is why it's the UAP task force, and then AIMSOG, and then this, and as he says, there will probably be other names because anytime people start to want to hold them accountable, it's time to get another name, another crew to start from nothing so we don't have the information to present. This has been the game since the 40s, the 1940s, and it keeps going on and on and on. Well, since the head of Navy intelligence has no idea about the Maelstrom Air Force Base incident, I'm going to be showing a video I did over two years ago going over that also including declassified documents, 88 pages worth of declassified documents that this guy's completely unaware of. I will be showing you that information as well, along with a story I did locally here in southern New Jersey, Lower Alloways Creek, not far from my UFO crash case. We have a nuclear plant, and in the 70s, I had a former security guard that witnessed a UFO setting off the radiation alarms for about 25 minutes, and the following day, the entire security team was let go, and this happened a few times. Quite remarkable story, and I think they both go together, and it's clear that the people that are running these task force are completely ignorant of this phenomena, and they are not looking into some of the most compelling information. So I hope that you enjoyed this video along with the declassified documents. UFO above nuclear plant sets off radiation alarms. Security guard first-hand encounter interview with Paul Evans Pedersen Jr., former security guard for the Salem Nuclear Plant. The Salem Nuclear Plant in New Jersey has been centered around multiple UFO sightings. Before I get into Paul's interview, I want to talk about an official incident that happened at the Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana where UFOs disabled nuclear warheads. Also, my very own UFO crash experience, the Lower Alloways Creek incident, happened nearby our nuclear plant. 1967 at the Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana, an airman with the Oscar Flight Launch Control Center saw a star-like object zigzagging high above him. Soon, a larger and closer light also appeared and acted in a similar way. The airman called his non-commissioned officer and the two men watched the light streak across the sky, maneuvering in impossible ways. 
The NCO phoned his commander, Lieutenant Robert Salas, who was not impressed. He ordered the NCO to keep watching the display and report if the objects got any closer. Minutes later, that is precisely what happened. Shouting into the phone, the NCO told Salas that a red glowing UFO was hovering outside of the gate. Salas woke his commander, Lieutenant Fred Mywald. As he briefed Mywald, an alarm went off in the small capsule, and both men saw a no-go light turn on for one of the missiles. Within seconds, about 10 of the missiles went down in succession. 20 miles away at the Echo Launch Control Center, the same scenario took place. Strike teams went to both launch facilities where maintenance crews were working and had been watching the UFOs over their sights. The missiles were down for about a day and neither the Air Force investigation nor Boeing's test found any cause for the shutdown. The Order of Light presents Paul Evans Pedersen Jr. Former security guard, Yo Security at the Salem County Nuclear Plant shares his encounter. He's also a musician, author, and a Pine Barrens and Jersey Devil expert and has his own TV show, Down the Pines. Okay, in 1977, I was a security guard for a company that was subcontracted by PSE&G to provide security at the uh, Second Sun, the island we used to call it, the Salem Nuclear Plant. And I'm not sure of the exact date but I was on duty at what was called breakwater. It was a part of the, uh, the nuclear plant. And right on the Delaware River, breakwater was. I guess that's why they called it breakwater. And I guess it was around seven o'clock at night when all at once, all of the alarms went off simultaneously. And everybody was running around what was, you know, what was wondering what was going on worrying if something cracked or something leaked and there was radioactivity going through the plant. And this lasted for about 20 minutes or a half hour. And then as soon as it started, it stopped. All of them, just everything quieted down. And, you know, everybody was gathering, talking to each other when there was going on. And somebody uh, came up to the group and said it was a, you know, something was hovering over top of the facility and to go back to your station and that's what we did and I finished out my shift went home uh, came back the next day got our uh, guns and went to our assigned stations and in about 10 minutes we were told report back to the front of the building with your badge and with your weapons and we said well what's going on what's going on and uh, so we went and there was guys a couple guys standing there that were dressed like they were dressed different they were like in suits and they were basically watching what was going on we handed our guns in and they told us you're dismissed uh we said why what's going on and they just told us go back to cherry hill that's where yo was based out of my office was in cherry hill go back to cherry hill and they'll fill you in on the details and we asked them uh what was all the commotion yesterday and they told us that a cloud of radiation had escaped from uh, China and encircled the world, and that's it flew over Salem and caused the alarms to go off. And that's what we were told. And when we went back to Yo, I went back to Yo in Cherry Hill, and they said, We don't need you anymore. If we do, we'll call you. And that was it. And given the nature of our business, national defense, we've had to sometimes be less forthcoming with information in open forums than many would hope. Uh, gentlemen, what seems incredibly difficult for you is that there's two almost competing but different uh, narratives. One is uh, it's uh, the, no one knows whether there's extraterrestrial life. It's a big universe, and it would be uh, pretty presumptuous to have a hard and fast conclusion. And then if there is, uh, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that there is some exploration coming here. Uh, and that underlies a lot of the reports you get. I think Mr. LaHood was asking about that. People think there must be extraterrestrial life and it's not at all uh, beyond the pale that uh, there would be a visit here. On the other hand, you, as the DOD, you have the responsibility to make sure uh, that our national security is protected and that if there are surveillance drones or 
uh, active drones that can disable our systems uh, that has to be analyzed, has to be stopped. Okay, Mr. Welch just asked a very good question, well-balanced question. I hope you're hungry for this nothing burger that's about to come up. <laughs> Welcome to the Nothing Burger, home of the Nothing Burger, voted the government's favorite restaurant. May I take your order? <laughs> so the way we're approaching this is with a, a more thorough, standardized methodology than what we had in the past. First and foremost, the Secretary of Defense is chartering this effort. This is not uh, someone lower in the Department of Defense. And he has assigned that task to the Office of Secretary of Defense, uh, the uh, Undersecretary for Intelligence and Security. That's me. Because I'm responsible for looking at intelligence matters. I'm responsible for security matters. This is potentially both. So when you start um, concerning the, um, the, ourselves with the safety of our personnel, the, the safety of our installations and bases, there's no other higher priority than what we have in actually getting after this. And, and as you had stated, we have been uh, assigned that task to actually stand up an office, the AIMSOG, which I believe the name server will likely change. But we have moved forward in terms of moving to establish that office. We have, uh, as of this week, uh, picked a director for that effort, uh, a very established and, um, and uh, accomplished individual. We've identified spaces. We've uh, worked with personnel across the Department of Defense with the services, and we've worked with the IC, which is on board in helping us work through this standardized methodology for now, bringing in data, analyzing that data, and reporting that data in the appropriate method and appropriate means so we can either get it to our service personnel to ensure their safety or get it to you and the Congress and to the public to ensure that you have oversight to what we're doing. So, charted by the Secretary of Defense, standardized, and uh, uh, really a methodical approach. It's something we're doing that has not been done before. Sorry about that one. I had to fast forward it. Trust me, you weren't missing anything coming out of that clown except a big old delicious nothing burger. Oh yeah. As detailed in the ODNI report, if and when individual UAP incidents are resolved, they likely fall into one of five potential explanatory categories. Airborne clutter, natural atmospheric phenomena, U.S. government or U.S. industry developmental programs, foreign adversary systems, or a other bin that allows for a holding bin of difficult cases and for the possibility of surprise and potential scientific discovery. And yes, the other bin. The thing they don't want you talking about. And just in case, if you couldn't figure it out, the other bin means extraterrestrials, crypto-terrestrials, interdimensional beings, which are essentially the same thing. This is what they don't want you knowing about. And I'll tell you what, if they spent as much time into nothing as they did this other bin, I think their results would be much different. What do you think? Should they open up the other bin or just keep talking about the nonsense and the national security threat? It's either one of two things. It's either it's either something out of this galaxy or it's something that we've recovered that we are reverse engineering that we are flying. Because you see a lot of these incidents happen in, in secure military zones where where civilian aircraft and other and, and watercraft are not allowed to be in. And so uh, there's a real question there. I, I think you want to call it the shadow government, you can call it whatever you want, but there's something else that's going on here and our government is so arrogant, they don't think that we can handle it. So what's the point of all of this? They've been gung-ho about national security over and over and over again. Then when an actual case of national security, going back to Maelstrom Air Force Base out in Montana, our NORAD systems, our nuclear weapons going offline, if that's not national security, I don't know what is, but they choose to ignore an actual security thing. And meanwhile, every other word coming out of their mouth is national security, national security. Also, ignoring the compelling evidence that they think the public isn't ready to hear. What do all of you think? Are you ready to hear it? Can you handle it? Can you process it? I'm pretty sure most of us can. At the end of the day, I've been saying this for the past three years, real disclosure does not come from the government. It comes from us, the people, the experiencers, the ones that see UFOs, the ones that are in contact with beings we don't quite understand. That is what is going on. It don't come from the government. It never will. Because if the government told the public what they know, we wouldn't have a government anymore. No one would ever trust them again. And due to this, it has caused so much ridicule, mockery, 
laughter at those that have had experiences and the government does not want to be held accountable so they will keep changing names of these things and changing committees and task force therefore no one will ever have to answer or have any sort of accountability at the end of the day we are the disclosure so please hit that like button subscribe and share this video and although this was a big old nothing burger i'm hoping that i provided some insightful information to make it worth something for all of you that wasted an hour watching this so if you want other actual information and great information on disclosure check out the page go through all the videos give it a like watch some of the older videos share it around really appreciate all of your love and support i'll see you next time robert earl white with the order of light we are the disclosure Welcome to the Nothing Burger, home of the Nothing Burger, voted the government's favorite restaurant. May I take your order? <laughs>